do a short video to uh, assist exhibitors who may be exhibiting at Virtually Expo in August uh, in setting up an account uh, on the Virtually Expo website and then setting up a Virtually Expo stand and configuring that and then getting some idea what it might look like. A um, couple of months now to the show, so quite a lot of exhibitors are now starting to do this, and so I'm getting a number of inquiries about how to do this. So it sounded sensible to me to uh, spend a few moments to do a video to explain the process. Okay, now let's uh, let's have a look at the site here. To um, that we're, we're going to show you how to do exactly what we've been talking about. So over here we have um, the virtually the virtually expo website. Um, and this um, at the moment is our home page. Uh, this will change in coming uh, weeks to have more, more information on it. Um, but right now, as an exhibitor, um, there is quite a lot of information available under how it works exhibiting. So under here there is um, general overview information. Um, there is uh, the exhibitor's guide if you want to know more about uh, um, setting up a stand and also um, sponsorship opportunities and things like that. Um, there are also some video guides such as this one I'm recording now will be on here um, shortly. Um, and um, there is then a uh, series of FAQs about setting up and running a virtual stand um, and there is technological solutions to running a virtual stand um, including ideas about how you might use your stand to do uh, demonstrations and, and so forth. Uh, now, in order to be able to do any of this um, at all, what you need to be able to do is to have a, a Expo account. That's that's the critical thing. Now, I wanted to explain um, something um, um, something about that uh, first of all, which is that um, you, as an individual, Fred Blogs, say, uh, may have a personal account on the Expo site. Personal accounts are are ones that are tied to you as an individual. And people can use personal accounts to buy tickets for shows, enter tournaments, um, and buy tickets to, to, to the expo, whether or not you're an exhibitor. Uh, as an exhibitor, we also set you up with an exhibitor page, a, a portal, we call it, the um, exhibitor portal. And on the exhibitor portal, you can, can do various things to do with your stand. In a normal year, it's where you can order things like power and furniture, where you can um, enter uh, varieties of information connected to uh, your physical stand. Um, this year it's also where you can configure your virtual stand. Now the important thing to realize is that um, our system, the website, doesn't have any magical way of knowing uh, that Fred Bloggs has the right to see Bloggs Games, say, that's his exhibiting name. Um, we, i.e. me, has to connect the two together. I have to basically do a simple little connection that basically says that you, Fred Bloggs, has the right to see the Bloggs Games portal. If you think about it, we've got to do it that way. Um, you just register an account as a personal person. How um, you know can our system know that that personal account can see, should see, has the right to see uh, all that exhibitor information and things like, including things like bills and payments and all that kind of thing. Um, now, fortunately, the whole step is relatively simple, but does occasionally cause a little bit of confusion. So therefore, I'm just going to quickly show you how, how to do that. So let's, let's flip back across to that um, to that uh, other screen again. Um, here we are. So the first thing you need to do is basically have a personal account. You've got to register an account. Um, so now this process, by the way, is all explained under how it works, exhibiting. And down here, there's an FAQ. How do I gain access to my exhibitor portal? And if you click in there, it talks a bit about the portal and then it talks about how you actually gain access. And actually, this, this process is really very simple. You have to register an account, and that will be a personal account. Um, and then you have to email me, richard at ukgamesexpo.co.uk, um, and I will link um, your personal account to your exhibitor portal so that when you log in, you can access the portal. If you try and log in, Without this process of happening, all you will see is your personal account page, which won't say, which won't show you an awful lot right now, given the fact that we haven't got a show, um, a physical show for you to have tickets to. Um, so, uh, but all you will see is your personal account. In a normal year, that might show you things like um, live entertainment shows that you've bought, um, tournaments, things like that. But it won't show you anything about your exhibitor information. 
Uh, so the important thing is that we need to link to the portal. So what you need to do is to give me the first name and the surname that you set up for the account. That's critical because the whole system, um, the index is basically surname based. So I look you up by your surname, your first name and your email address. And I find blogs Fred um, and then the email address that you told me, fred.blogs at gmail.com. And I link that to blogs games. Simply done. The whole process takes literally seconds, providing you follow this process. Okay, so the process requires you to go up here to the login register button and register an account. Assuming you've not registered an account before, um, then you go here, you register with an email address, you confirm it, and you put a first name and a, and a surname, and you choose a password which you confirm. You hit the register button. Then, then as the as the instructions. Uh, said you then email me this information and I will go in to the portal and I will link the two together so that when you come to when you come back to here and you log in with that information with your email address and your password um, you will be able to access your exhibitor page if you don't follow that process all you will see is a personal page. This is a personal page, it's my personal page, and it would show tickets I might have bought and anything else that I uh, might be involved in, either bring and buy, but it won't give me any information about Medusa Games, which um, is my little indie publisher. Um, however, if I log in, um, once this process has happened and a connection has been made, then I'll be able to see both my personal account down here, which I can switch to whenever I want to, and also my exhibitor portal account which is here okay so assuming you've gone through that process and you've made that happen you should be seeing something like this page here uh, we usually put some um, announcements and information on here relevance um, so it's always good to keep an eye on that particularly as we as, as we approach the shows um, and this over the on the left hand side is where you access the stuff about your um, you you as an exhibitor any or your orders um, um, that you might have placed your stand uh, orders and uh, and uh, marketing and advertising and anything like that will be in there and you'll be able to see where you are with your payments. Um, your um, but the important thing from the perspective of this um, virtually expo show, which is which is coming up, is the stands, which is here. Um, let's have a look at that. So this is the stands um, um, information. And if you've got a virtual stand set up, then you should see um, something like this, which says Stand V74, which is a Medusa Games as a virtual stand. Um, it's just been randomly allocated numbers. Normally, these numbers mean something in so far as they relate to the location in the trade hall. Uh, this year, of course, this is a virtual um, uh, stand, and so it is just a randomised uh, number. Every stand's got to have a number. Uh, but if you click on it, you will then see two uh, lines here. You'll see stand details and you'll see preview stand. So to start to enter information about um, yourself um, as uh, an exhibitor, what you want the public who are visiting your stand during the virtually expo to be able to see, you need to go into the stands details here. And then you can follow your way through the stands details, adding um, the stand name, um, your, um, your description, um, a long description which can actually have HTML code in it can be linked to other um, um, sites and information like that um, it can have a little bit of code a little bit of sort of formatting bold and italics and lists and so forth um, and underneath it this is very very important you need to choose categories um, you have to choose a private well Choose three up to three categories which which describe you as an exhibitor. So in the case of Medusa Games, I have chosen board games, card games, family games. Um, but I have to choose a primary category that um, that I want um, my um, my stand to be under. Um, and this will become important when we get to the look at the uh, the virtual hall map um, as to what my stand the stand will look like. I can then add a number of links. So these links will be could be to things like the, the your online shop where you want exhibitors to, visitors to go to to potentially buy things, um, which is always good, um, and things like your Twitch stream, your Discord channels, um, perhaps um, a YouTube video that you um, you'd like people to watch. Um, this is quite useful because 
um, you might not want to man, man, man your uh, Discord channels and your Twitch streams or anything like that all through Virtually Expo. And having a couple of videos on here which people can perhaps click on and watch, maybe an overview of your games and things like that, will give them something to, to, to have a look at. Um, and you can add basically as many links as you, as you want. Now, a little tip here. The um, system is set up to recognise, currently to recognise, uh, Discord and Twitch as channels which are what we call talk channels, which means they are an opportunity for the visitor to interact directly with you um, in a live sense. Okay, So if you place uh, Discord channels and Twitch on here, um, the system will tend to assume that that is a position where that is a place where individuals could come to um, and could ask you questions either in the chat window in Twitch or by coming to text channels and audio channels on your Discord server. Um, as you see when we come to the the page for the stand that that will have an impact upon what the visitor will see. Other pages such as the online shop and YouTube um, Facebook pages and so on. Um, at the moment, the system will just uh, see those as additional links. It won't classify those as, as talk pages. So, what am I talking about here? Well, let's go to, uh, once you finish this, by the way, you have to hit the Save Changes button. And at the top here, it should um, it should uh, go green, I believe, and say that, the, the, that this has been submitted. Um, so, let's go back to the stands um, and into this uh, stand again, but now I'm going to look at this preview stand. If I look at preview stand, it is showing me um, what my stand is going to look like if people click on it on the hall map. What hall map do you uh, do I am I talking about? Well, this is the hall map. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Um, but the pet the stand information is here. So this is Medusa Games. It has got those three categories which we've given uh, logos to. Um, it's got my description and an expanded um, description with links in. Um, and here are those links that I've placed earlier. I've also got uh, talk channels, um, Twitch and Discord channels. If, I, if the visitor was to click on any of these, they will go through to um, the uh, Twitch stream. Um, for example, if it goes to try and load up the Twitch stream. Um, and um, also the Discord channel, um, where um, if people click on that, it will take people through to um, my the, the Discord channel to um, try and lock onto onto that, and so on and so forth with the uh, the online shop um, and etc. Uh, at the bottom here are events. Now events are timed events that you might want to run at your virtual virtual stand um, so for example here I've put a test 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 event on of just a demonstration of a two-player expansion of <laughs> Great Fire 1986 I'm sure it was 1666 I'll have to edit that um, anyway this is an event which I've placed on as a way of demonstrating um, an event um, and a quick description and here is information about what the event is like and that link there will take people to wherever the event is going to be held. I'm actually holding it on my Twitch stream. Actually if they link on it they'll go through to my Twitch stream right now uh, but the point is uh, this is a this is a timed event so um, they know that if they go there at 10 o'clock on, on, on the Saturday of Virtually Expo they would be able to see a demonstration of the two-player um, Great Fire game of 1666. Um, so now these events, I'm going to show you how you add them in a minute, but you can have as many events as you want, um, to be honest. Um, they are going to be visible not just here on the uh, on your stand, but also in an exhibitor event page on the site. So the upcoming events in the next sort of short while, um, half an hour, hour or something like that, are, are visible on that page. And so people can go to that and can see all the events that any others are proposing running. Um, across all the ex ex exhibitor stands during Virtually Expo, and then they can decide what they fancy the look of. Okay, so that is how that is a, um, uh, a stand, um, and that you can see is drawn information from that form that I set up um, a few moments ago. 
Okay, so you now with this preview function, you're you are able to submit the information and preview it. Now, just a word of caution here that there there may be a a, a pause or a delay between submitting information to the form and the preview page working, um, because there is um, a certain amount of caching that goes on with the the website um, to. Um, just because of potential load on the site and therefore sometimes it isn't an instantaneous thing you have to occasionally wait a um, um, few minutes or so for it to, to update so give it a while if something's happened in five minutes or ten minutes go make a cup of tea come back in half an hour and obviously if you're not seeing anything that's changing after that well fire off an email to me and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take a look okay so that's how you get a look at, at how the, the site uh, the, the page may look. Now we may still tinker with this as we go towards the expo. Virtually expo is now um, still you know, eight weeks or so away. We may get some logos or possibly some pictures on here, but I can't. We're not absolutely guaranteeing anything specific at the moment. We're 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 working towards a um, a goal here, but um, um, we'll we'll get as much functionality um, and bells and whistles on there as is possible as time as time permits. But hopefully this will give you some idea that you can start thinking about how to make the most of this as a as a method of interfacing with um, the the public. Now let's go let's go if I click this back arrow on my preview page, it doesn't actually take me back to the, the portal. What it does is it takes me into the um, the expo hall map. Um, now this at the moment is um, uh, not visible. Those are URL up here, and you can type it in. If you've got an exhibitor account, it will allow you to see the map. Um, if a visitor was to try and use that at the present moment, they wouldn't be able to access this this page. They have to have you have to have an exhibitor account to be able to see this map that we're showing you. But towards the show time, we'll make this live. But, but the idea at the moment is this allows um, allows visitors to start to sorry exhibitors to start setting up their stands and seeing some idea of what the end result is um and before we allow the the, the public in in general to to take a look at this although we may start showing some snapshots now um some information about this hall um i'm about to add a couple more major sponsors onto here so this map will change um um soon um, major sponsors um, basically get these um, big squares. Um, associate sponsors um, these sort of um, double size stands, um, and then sporting sponsors and um, and other uh, exhibitors will be on one of these standard uh, size stands. Uh, how is it ordered within the hall? Well, ex major sponsors come at first, then associate, then. If anyone's got supporting sponsor status, they come next, and then it randomizes everybody else. Um, so every time, every time you load this, it would it will load it a different um, configuration. It is not alphabetical. Uh, this is deliberate. It is to stop the trick that uh, quite often you see if you ever attended the Edinburgh Fringe, uh, which of course has thousands of shows and they're done and they're alphabetically uh, listed on sites and in catalogues. And so a lot of the time what happens is you get ah, another show or uh, a, 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 a comedy or something like that. Um, and so to stop um, um, a few tricks like a, 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 a game stand or something like that, um, we are going the, this will be randomly generated each time people go in. Um, but it will first of all look for the major sponsors, then the associate sponsors, then the supporters, and anybody else. It will then say, "Is there? Do any of these stands have an event coming up soon?" Um, you think by soon, I don't know quite how long that'll be at the moment. We may set it to an hour, or half an hour, or two hours. It depends on how many events um, we have. Um, but um, it will first of all look now because producer games here has got an event and not many other people as yet have got events it's it's shoved me up there towards the top of the hall the idea is that if, when people first come in if they're starting to click on stands then it will show um, the what's what what events are coming up but they can wander down like this and when they do this little needle wanders along um, like that um, and they can see the hall now, at the moment about 50 or so exhibitors have got as far as um, placing um, a category, uh, at least one category, against their name, which is why their stands are showing up here um, on this hall map. Um, as more people start to put information in, the the hall map will fill up will fill up more. Um, 
a word about the colours and logos and so forth. So major sponsors and associates will get their logo on their stand. Um, nobody else does. Um, but the stand colour says something about what type of um, um, exhibit they are and what their primary choice was. So orange, um, orange are ball games. Um, purple, I think, is so pink and magenta here is role playing games. Uh, retail, like Travelling Man, here is a is a blue colour. Um, so it's just to give some idea of the different sorts of. I think family games are are, are green, like um, EA games over here. Um, and it just gives some idea um, of the type of games that clicking on that stand you're, you're likely to, to to see. Now you can you don't just have to sort of scroll down, which will obviously be quite a long um, column. You can also uh, go directly to stands up here by using the search button. Um, so I can I could type I, I can type in um, say let's try Zatu. I think that'll, that'll pop up with Zatu Games um, stand. I can also um, oops, I can also filter by type of game. So if I want to see RPG um, companies, it will show me RPG companies. Something's happened with the formatting there. Um, anyway, um, so you can see that um, that map will get will, will get a bit more filled in as time as time progresses. Uh, but hopefully it's starting to look nice and nice and colourful. Now what happens when you click on a stand, of course, is it takes you to the stand like that. So people are going to be able to interact with you as an exhibitor in, in a variety of, of ways. When they come to when they come here to the expo map, then under what's on virtual trade hall, uh, rather than this this page at the moment, which is a placeholding page that explains to them how things work, it will go to that that map that we were we were just looking at okay um, and they will be able to then jump around the hall and go off and do things under events i believe there will be exhibitor events showing up over here so then they'll be able to go and have a look at what the exhibitors um events are and then um, if they see that someone's got a um, um a designer talking about an, an upcoming prototype of the game in an hour's time they may decide that that's what they want to go and have a listen to all right. Now, once they go to a stand, the idea, of course, is that they can then interact with it in various ways. They might just want to have a look at what people have got to buy, so they may just go to the online shop. Um, they may have a look if there's some special offers in the, in, in perhaps in the uh, in the description there. Um, they they will look at the events and see what's what's going on and what's coming up. But also, they may decide that they want to play a demonstration. So, if they decide they wanted to have a demonstration of that. Great Fire of London um, two-player um, expansion. Then they could um, come come and have a talk to us. So you know, and up here I've put in. You can also chat to us on our Discord channel and arrange a demo of our games uh, using the Tabletopia environment, which my, my games have been converted into. Uh, so just hop on Discord um, general channel and ask your questions by text or audio. So then, if they go off to the Discord channel and, and you know log in, they'll be able to. Um, Go and have a, a conversation with us, and, and from that we will then arrange demonstrations. Additionally, they may just want to watch on Twitch because on Twitch we'll probably have uh, a lot of content happening live quite a lot of the the weekend. So they might just jump onto the Twitch stream and watch a demonstration that's already underway. Um, so these are the sorts of ways that we we um, anticipate. Um, exhibit visitors interacting with with exhibitors um, and what's going to be interesting I think is to see what the exhibitors make make of all of this what you do with this because you know I know um, from running the trade halls um, for 14 years um, that people can be incredibly inventive and imaginative with their trade stands sometimes to the level that gives us a bit of a headache <laughs> we try and decide if, if things are breaching health and safety um, limits or whatever um, but um, nevertheless there are certainly some um, striking and exciting visual um, stands at, at, uh, at GP Games Expo now that's not happening this year um, but we're going to try and do something like it as best as we can using this um, environment so um, I hope um, this little video was of use um, the um, oh yes, I was going to say, have I actually shown you how to how to do? Um, I don't think I have. I haven't shown you yet quite how to to do to submit an event. That's that's down here under manage events. 
Uh, so to manage to, to, to submit an event, you click manage event. Any events that you've already got uh, will show up. You hit submit an event, and you have a, another form in which you can put in what whether it's a demo or a chat or Q and A session, what the event name is, um, the link to where it's going to happen, and a bit more information like uh, well, obviously it requires the times, uh, a description, and so on and so forth. And then you hit submit an event, and it will save it in the listing now this this manage events um, um, mechanism there that 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 system will be live all the way through the expo so whilst they may, uh, we, we're hoping to sort the caching out so there isn't much of a delay um, but you should be able to submit an event and it go live pretty well straight away um, and then um, people will be able to to see them so if you decide spontaneously as it were just to announce that in half an hour or an hour's time you're going to put on um, another event or some description another demonstration or something like that you can do so um, likewise you'll be able to um, you know to uh, um, look at look at events um, and you can always delete the events as well um, so um, so over here within the event you have the option of deleting it so you've got control over this so you can put events on if you if you if it gets to a certain time and the the internet's um, um, the you know the internet is ropey um, or somebody's somebody's not in a position to be able to do a demonstration you can delete the event you can you can edit it you can you can you know reconfigure it as you as you desire um, so um, we'll probably do some more of these videos um, um, it's helping me get my head around how things are going to work to be honest if, if nobody else um, so we'll have a look at how um, the whole thing works in a way sort of the, the, the stand with the discord and the twitch and all this sort of thing in combination and how that that might work as, a, as an example um, we're probably going to get to I probably don't know this yet but they're probably going to be all uh, uh, pulled in onto various laptops and computers in order to demonstrate the uh, um, the, the process Okay, well that's all for now. I hope, hope that was useful.